Greetings. Welcome to Lunar Burn Studios. My name's Eric Stevenson. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to sprue a wax pattern, specifically for lost wax and utilizing ceramic shell as our investment. To start, we need to talk about some basic approach, theory, um, what goes, the components that what goes into a sprue system. But first, I'd like to speak a little bit about how I how I teach and how I present information. And I think that would be a little bit more helpful as we move forward through these videos. And with that said, let's get started. One of the things about the way I teach is that I give a lot of information. My style of teaching is to not only explain the process itself, but to talk about all the little nuances and aspects and influences that surround the process. So you understand why you're doing certain things for certain reasons. But also we're gonna talk about the, even though we're dealing with a singular process in this situation of sprewing, there are decisions that were made in the pattern making and in the chasing that's gonna facilitate us now. And then there's tricks that we can do now in the sprewing that are gonna help facilitate the burnout, the casting of the metal, the deinvestment. And so not one process in the founder practice is you know, isolated and singular. Everything is interconnected. And if we look at the broad scheme, the, the, the big picture, we can actually make our life easier as we move along down each step of the process. Ultimately, my style of casting is different than what most people have learned in school. But a lot of my decision making and how I'm approaching my patterning and how I'm gonna, in this specific situation, approaching my sprue systems, go hand in hand with the different aspects of my process. One of the things I do differently is I hang my investments. So instead of burying them in, in a, a bucket of sand or coffin for preheat or you know, resting up against a bricks and whatnot, I like things actually to hang. So once I pour the metal into it, one, if there's a leak, I can see where the leak's happening and I can fix it, I can access it. Two, once I get the metal into the mold, I, you know, it will evenly cool and draw from the cup. So what we want to do is as the pattern of the metal is cooling, we want the cup to stay molten as long as possible. And so as this metal, molten metal is going to contract, it's going to pull additional metal from other sources. So we want to give it a reservoir. And that's ultimately what the cup is going to act, act as, as it pulls metal down from it, maintain the dimensions of the pattern. And so by, and by hanging it, it helps facilitate that process. What we're gonna to wanna to do is add a little bit of extra distance in the length of our gate. This will help you know, with velocity and head pressure a little bit if we need it, but ultimately it gives us a little extra clearance and enough room for it to actually hang on the hanger or the rack in the pour pit. Moving forward, we're gonna utilize the techniques that I've shown you in the previous videos, and those links can be found here. We want to apply and build on those moving forward as we do our sprue system. In this case, we're going to do a simple direct sprue, and direct meaning the metal is gonna flow directly from the cup through the gate to the pattern. All sprue systems are ultimately consist of three major elements, a pour cup, a gate, an event. Well, I guess <laughs> I guess technically four parts, including the pattern, but the sprue system itself, cup, gate, and vent. So we're gonna do a direct sprue in this situation. There's ultimately also uh, indirect spruing, uh, which would be bottom feed. So we'd actually bring this gate over and have it come enter the pattern from the bottom, which would compress and push the gases up from, you know, up from that. With indirect, you'd wind up getting a much smoother metal flow. Um, it's uh, more suited for heavy detail and texture and, and or, or thinner castings at times. But in this situation, I found I, just doing a simple direct sprewing to be the most efficient way to do this specific pattern. So before we start sprewing, we want to modify this wax just slightly to facilitate different aspects of the sprewing process. So one of the first things in this system is that we have the gate coming down perpendicular to the back of the skull. And so we're asking that, you know, the metal to do this and then flow around and it's really not gonna to wanna, to, it's gonna fight us. So what we wanna do is we're gonna give it a little bit more room. And so I have this one skull where I cut, cut, cut in half. And so in looking at this skull, 
we can see that this, where we're gonna actually attach, it's only, like I said, only about an eighth inch thick. And so, but there's already kind of an indentation here. So we're gonna thicken this area up. Okay, to better show my point on how we wanna modify the wax, let's use a sketch. So we have our main gate. We have the back of the skull where we're gonna attach. Not good at drawing an arc in that direction, but it'll serve us, serve the purpose. So once we burn, so we you know do our initial weld. When we burn out, this will be the negative space. So as the metal comes in, if we're doing it as is, we're asking the metal to do a right hand turn, or well, or a 90 degree turn. But if we add a little bit of a dollop of wax, then what we can do is we burn out, we increase our negative space, we increase the transitional space. So now the wax, the metal, when it flows, have some room to adjust. Now it could create a little bit of turbulence in here, but the, the amount of more even flow, better compression, will what more than outweigh the little bit of turbulence we get here and increasing our flow rate into the rest of the pattern. The other couple little things we're gonna do while we're doing it is that the space up behind the eye socket and the depth of the cheekbone, whereas they'll flow fine in this situation, we're gonna also look forward to the step after the metal's cast and then getting the investment out. We're gonna create a little bit more draft. We're basically gonna thicken up these areas a little bit behind the eyeball and in the cheekbone to help facilitate getting the investment out. When this is actually part of a full skull, full skull, getting the, a, a chisel in here or a sandblaster head to actually get behind the eyeballs is, it's a pain in the ass. Okay, and so yeah, so now that we've modified those three little areas, you know, the, the, where the gate's gonna come in and the eyeballs on the cheeks, now this pattern is ready to move forward with the actual sprueing. Now the components of the sprue system, as we've already mentioned, are the cup, the gates, and the vents. In this situation, whether we're melting metal or melting wax, those materials, as we're heating them up, are expanding as they go to a liquid state. And our ceramic shell is only gonna be about a quarter inch thick. And so if, it, if, if all the wax starts expanding before it has a chance to evacuate out of the system, it's gonna crack our shell prematurely. So what we wanna do is we wanna use materials that are going to evacuate um, as quick as possible. In this situation, I like using styrofoam cups because the, st the fire styrofoam itself is just gonna vaporize really quickly. But at this point, the styrofoam is a little too flexible and too weak to actually be suitable for this use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of cardboard that's just slightly bigger than the top of the cup. We're gonna cap it off. And then we're also gonna then uh, dip the wax or dip the cup you know, several times and wax to thicken it up. We're gonna add a little bit of extra wax create a button on the bottom of the cup so we have something to weld the gate to. The other advantage of capping off with cardboard is to create a flat bottom and so it'll you know comfortably sit on the table but more specifically we want to set it up so the sprue system actually will balance on the cup. The reason why this helps out is that both on the drying rack and the slurry room Things can, you know, the shell itself can dry evenly, but then also when we stick it in the burnout kiln, this will balance and I don't have to lean it up against the walls of the kiln. I get an even flow, even heat, so the entirety of the pattern and the gating system flow out evenly. So with the styrofoam cup, it'll, and this is just a thin coat of wax, maybe about a 16th inch. So the heat will get up in here, that, that thin amount of wax will evacuate, the styrofoam will, will, will vaporize, 
and the cup will be eliminated first. Next uh, component to the sprue system is the, literally the sprues, the gates, the vents. You can make your gates and vents out of the same wax you're using for your patterns, but if you, know, if you can, it's really nice to be able to use these pre-extruded uh, wax shapes. This is uh, still a microcrystalline wax, so it's still the same you know, base type of wax as your pattern wax, but it has a slightly lower melting point, so it's gonna go to a liquid fairly quickly. So our cup evacuates, then the gate evacuates, and then ultimately leaving room for our pattern as it gets, gets to that point. And the one thing about the patterning wax is that it goes from you know, a solid to kind of a mushy state, pl plastic state, then to a liquid. And so there's a little bit of a delay before that liquiding and that ultimately gives us time to get the cup and the gate out of the way. Okay, so one of the nice uh, details of these pre-extruded sprues is that typically from about three quarter inch, one inch and up, they're hollow or cord. And the main advantage of this is that, as we've talked about, the wax wants to expand as it's going into a liquid state, which could potentially crack our shells. By these things being hollow, as the wax is expanding, it actually can collapse in on itself slightly, and it you know, alleviates that pressure on the shell until it has a chance to even go more liquid, but it also, as a secondary effect, pushes the wax out of the mold and in a more efficient manner. So the wax shapes I prefer to use in my gating is that I like to use uh, squares, extruded square shapes for my gates, and round wax shapes for my vents. And the reason why I like doing breaking it up is a couple different things. I can easily point to what's a gate and what's a vent. Um, but also when we get it into the metal, we know when we start kind of problem solving why something maybe worked or didn't work, I know that when we're breaking out the investment and going back into the metal, I can very quickly tell what was gate, what was vent. If I've already lost track of maybe whether it was coming up to the top rim of the cup, or the uh, bottom of the cup. So for my sprueing, I prefer to use square gates. And the reason for this is that if we have, if you have, a, say, a, a large round uh, gate, main gate go, flowing from your cup, if the metal goes in at an angle and hits it just at the right spot, it can generate a Coriolis effect, kind of like a to toilet bowl. It can do a couple different things. It can prematurely cool down the metal as it flows into the gating system. It can also drag, as it's dragging those gases in, those gases can, be, as they're mixing with the metal, can generate other casting anomalies um, in the castings. And so, you know, things that we would need to deal with and fix later on down the line. By uh, having a square sprue, when the metal hits these long linear edges, it has better chance of just dragging the metal straight into your pattern. So now that we've covered the components that go into a typical sprue system for lost wax casting with ceramic shell, we're ready to go ahead and get started with the spruing, but that will have to wait until the next video. So if you've gotten something from this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to continue seeing the process of how we uh, transform this skull into metal, then hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified when the next video launches, and until the next video, be creative and be safe.